And on E70, cardiac glycosides, what are they? That includes drugs like digitalis. And uh, digitalis, digoxin, cardiac glycosides, they all mean the same thing. These are drugs used for, at least one of their purposes, is for heart failure. The definition of heart failure, of a failing heart, is a decreased cardiac output. That's the definition, a drop in cardiac output. Now why? Why is their cardiac output less than normal? Here are possible reasons. They've suffered an MI. What's an MI? A myocardial infarction, a heart attack. A heart attack, a myocardial infarction, means part of their heart has died. So is it understandable that somebody whose heart, part of their heart has died, is going to be pumping less blood than normal? So that's called a drop in cardiac output. Another cause is an arrhythmia, a heart arrhythmia. If somebody has an abnormal electrical arrhythmia of their heart, where their heart doesn't beat normally, so therefore they may make their cardiac output less than normal. Uh, it's given uh, another cause of a drop in cardiac output is valve problems. So when those valves in the heart don't open and close the way they're supposed to, that results in a decreased cardiac output. So why did they give them this drug? What's digoxin do? Digoxin increases myocardial contractility. And you'd say, what's that? Boy, that felt good. It increases the force of contraction. That's what myocardial contractility means. Increased force of contraction. It makes the heart contract more powerfully. And that improves cardiac output. And by improving cardiac output, that improves circulation of blood through the body and reduces edema. Now, uh, interestingly, digitalis not only increases force of contraction, but it also has the effect of slowing down heart rate. And because it slows down heart rate, digitalis, digoxin, can also be used to control uh, atrial flutters and atrial fibrillations. So there's these abnormal electrical rhythms that some people have called atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, and it's used, uh, they use digitalis to control that as well. But in terms of uh, heart uh, uh, decreasing, uh, in terms of the main action of digitalis is to increase cardiac output. Uh, interestingly, and this might be worth knowing, people on digitalis have an exaggerated gag reflex. It's just a weird side effect. All right, cardiac antiarrhythmic drugs. Uh, what is, uh, what's an arrhythmia? What's a cardiac arrhythmia? A cardiac arrhythmia is abnormal electrical patterns in the heart. It's where there's abnormal electrical currents through the heart. And if the electrical current through the heart is abnormal, the heart doesn't contract normally. Now, why does the person have abnormal electrical currents in their heart? Either because of myocardial ischemia or myocardial infarction. All of these things are interconnected. Most of these drugs, the cardiac antiarrhythmics, reduce myocardial excitability. They basically are, they depress or slow down electrical activity in the heart. And uh, uh, quinidine is a drug that's used uh, for atrial and ventricular arrhythmias. It's the most commonly uh, prescribed drug, although there's some other ones. And you'll also notice lidocaine. And I think I've mentioned previously that when I mention the word lidocaine to you, the first thing that comes to mind is local anesthetic. But if you say the word lidocaine to a nurse or a physician, the first thing they think of is not a local anesthetic. They think of it as a cardiac antiarrhythmic. Lidocaine is one of the most, it, it is the most important cardiac antiarrhythmic used in a hospital setting. It, uh, and here's why. You'd say, well, how could it, if it's a local anesthetic, then how's it being used as a cardiac antiarrhythmic? Lidocaine, as you know, uh, blocks the sodium ion channels in excitable cells. 
it reduces the influx of sodium ions into the nerve fibers, blocking electrical conduction in the nerve fiber. Does that ring a bell? That's what lidocaine does. It blocks the conduction of the nerve impulse by reducing the flow of sodium into the nerve fiber. But it does that on all excitable cells, not just nerve cells, but also muscle cells, including heart muscle. So lidocaine slows down the entry of sodium ions into heart muscle cells, slowing down electrical conduction in the heart. So if somebody has abnormal electrical currents in the heart, too much electrical currents in the heart, it slows down these electrical currents in the heart. They don't want to shut it off. They want to give enough drug to slow down abnormal electrical currents. So uh, it is used in the hospital setting to control what are called PVCs, premature ventricular contractions and other ventricular arrhythmias. Uh, incidentally, these adverse effects of lidocaine, uh, this is why you have learned that when you give lidocaine as a local anesthetic, you know to aspirate up to make sure you're not injecting into a blood vessel. What if you did give the lidocaine into the bloodstream? So lidocaine is going to affect the heart. And the first place this is going when it enters the bloodstream is it's headed to the heart. And so it's going to slow down electrical activity in the heart. It's going to cause slowing of the heart rate. It's going to cause blood vessels in the body to dilate. You'd say, why, why would lidocaine cause blood vessels in the body to dilate? Because it interferes with sodium ions not only going into heart cells, but into vascular smooth muscle. To, all muscle conducts action potentials. Is that right? All muscle. There are action potentials in skeletal muscle, action potentials in heart muscle, action potential in visceral smooth muscle, including the visceral vascular smooth muscle in the walls of vessels. If it slows down the entry of sodium ions into vascular muscle, it also slows down action potentials and contraction. So it leads to generalized vasodilation. Uh, the, uh, and uh, it slows down uh, action potentials in the brain, causing CNS depression. So when lidocaine goes into the bloodstream, these are the things we worry about it doing to the other parts of the body. Again, the dosages that you're giving are not anything to be overly worried about, but these are the things we, you're trained to keep in mind. Uh, on page E18, I'm not going to talk about either of these. How's that? Look on page E31. On, the, on E31, uh, this is from your lexicon book, Lisinopril. So Lisinopril goes under the brand names Prinavil and Dexestril. So if you see these drugs ending in IL, it's an ACE inhibitor. So there is a generic available, like CVS brand lisinopril. What's its pharmacologic category? It's an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, an ACE inhibitor. Why is it used? For high blood pressure either alone or in combination with another antihypertensive agent. Remember we've told you they first try a diuretic. If that doesn't work by itself, they add another drug. So they may use it by itself, they may use it uh, with another drug. On page E32, uh, if you look at the very bottom of E32, so how does it work? It's an inhibitor of angiotensin converting enzyme. It prevents the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Remember that angiotensin 2 does two things. It constricts blood vessels, which raises blood pressure, and it also causes the secretion of aldosterone, which causes salt and water retention and raises blood pressure. So what uh, using this drug does, an AC inhibitor, since it prevents the formation of angiotensin II, it's going to reduce vasoconstriction, lowering blood pressure, and it's going to reduce the release of aldosterone, reducing salt and water retention, lowering blood pressure. So it lowers the blood pressure in two ways. On E35, this is right from your lexicon book on nitroglycerin. And again, what we're trying to do is to learn enough about drugs where we can look up drugs and it kind of makes some sense. 
So nitroglycerin goes under a lot of different brand names. Uh, there is a generic available, like CVS brand nitroglycerin. Uh, the pharmacologic category, it's a vasodilator. Notice it's not, uh, it's not working by blocking adrenaline receptor sites, or it's not a parasympathomimetic, it's not a sympatholytic. It directly relaxes vascular smooth muscle. And it's used in the treatment of angina pectoris. It can be given uh, IV, uh, uh, it can be given by uh, different routes. Uh, an unlabeled use, now we learned what that means. An unlabeled use means not a use for a purpose other than what the FDA uh, approved it for, is esophageal spastic disorders. Totally different, you know, uh, but it may have some benefit in that. Uh, as far as uh, dental effects, the main one is the uh, most common thing you know to answer when, as far as the side effect of drugs is aristomia. On uh, E36, on E36, all right, so uh, under mechanism of action, it works by relaxation of the vascular smooth muscle, producing a vasodilator effect on peripheral veins and arteries. Uh, contraindications. Now, a contraindication means uh, when you should not give the drug. When should you not give nitroglycerin? So, obviously, any hypersensitivity or allergy to a drug always is a contraindication, but it also warns concurrent use with phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. And our first thought is, what the hell is a phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor? Well, the answer is, these are drugs like Viagra. So the question is, why? Why is that a problem? Well, you may or may not know, the way that Viagra drugs work is they are vasodilators. And they are, they are given to dilate blood vessels, especially those in the penis of a guy. And by dilating the blood vessels in the penis, that increases the flow of blood into the penis for erection. That's the whole idea. So uh, if somebody is uh, on nitroglycerin for their angina, and they take some Viagra, which is also going to dilate vessels, what does vasodilation do to blood pressure? Lowers it. And their blood pressure is going to drop. And if they're, not, if they're on a beta blocker, the, the big concern is uh, uh, the, the drop in blood pressure. If they're not on a beta blocker, the car car cardiovascular reflux center is going to trigger a reflex tachycardia, and their heart's just going to start skyrocketing as far as how rapidly it's going to have that reflex tachycardia. In drug interactions, it says avoid concomitant use of nitroglycerin with any phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor like the Viagra type of drugs. So I just mentioned that. In fact, on page E37, for sildenafil, that's Viagra. And so it, what's the pharmacologic category? It's a phosphodiesterase 5 enzyme inhibitor. What's its uh, use? Treatment of erectile dysfunction. Notice, incidentally, it has an interesting unlabeled use. It is given to people with pulmonary hypertension to lower blood pressure in their pulmonary circuit. So it's interesting that people in the hospital who have uh, pulmonary high blood pressure may be taking Viagra. But it, so, that, so that's why you always have to understand. You may look up the drug and say, I don't understand. They've got, they've got some uh, cardiovascular problem. They put them on Viagra. But they're using it for this purpose. Viagra for the actual purpose is for males, but for unlabeled use, is it only for males or for females also? No, it would be the, the one that's, they're using it for its action on the lungs. That would be for everybody. For everybody. Okay. Yeah, it dilates uh, other vessels as well. It's primarily those in the penis, but uh, will dilate other vessels as well. Um, and on page uh, E38, so again, I, uh, I wrote at the very top of E38, just remember, generalized vasodilation lowers the blood pressure. So if you just start dilating and dilating, you really start to lower that blood pressure. Um, the, the way that uh, Viagra works, and in fact, for that matter, the way nitroglycerin works, 
It, they actually mimic nitric oxide. You may have learned in physiology, nitric oxide is a neurotransmitter released by some neurons that dilates blood vessels. And nitroglycerin and Viagra mimic that action in dilating blood vessels. And on E39, on E39, notice again, here is the warning on the Viagra description, warning, avoid concomitant use of sildenafil, that's Viagra, with the uh, vasodilators, these organic nitrates, like nitroglycerin. 